introduction. Uh, you reminded me of my mother, actually. Um, but anyway, um, I just dropped off a plane from Singapore where everybody is avidly anti-aging, although I feel that I've accelerated my age with jet lag. Um, it is my remit to talk to you today about really therapeutics using natural medicines, which of course constitutes under present regulatory circumstances an illegal position, but so what, since I'm approaching 40 years of experience of the practice of medicine, um, I find it hard to have my thoughts legislated. But without further ado, we shall accelerate, since I've been asked to do the impossible, which is truncate this lecture to 30 minutes. Um, I apologize for my qualifications. They represent two distinguished aspects of my career. Number one, I never actually ever wanted to go to work. And number two, I can't keep a job down. But anyway, the concept of inner beauty is best understood by listening to my favorite singer, Mick Hucknall. He is, in fact, simply red. And he sings about the concept of beauty lying within the body. And he is more right than one can imagine. Physical appearance is merely a function of general body health. And all cosmetic interventions, regardless of their degree of invasiveness, have, at best, intermediate-term benefits. In many cases, quite short-term benefits. Because longevity is really a legacy of positive lifestyle, and this results in useful looks. So you can see my lifestyle was compromised. Natural medicine appears to be favored by clients in the ever-emerging area of medical spas uh, or anti-aging and recuperative clinics. And indeed, natural medicine must be combined with advanced preventive medicine strategies. And quite frankly, anti-aging antics should be avoided because anti-aging methodology is all about really preventing disorders that result in premature death and disability. And please understand that uh, waving dandelions in certain circumstances is really not the way to go. Recuperative medicine must integrate allopathic and natural approaches. Now, longevity is an interesting word. It implies health retention. And to achieve elite age with ill health is not really a good objective. First-line anti-aging strategies, again, I repeat, are the prevention of diseases of premature disability. And I'd like to redefine disorders like diabetes and metabolic syndrome X as indeed disorders of premature aging. That's exactly what they are, as indeed are issues such as cancer and osteoporosis. Now, several domains of lifestyle medicine um, really exist and present themselves in clinical practice. And perhaps we're all tired of being told about lifestyle factors and good outcome. It's not necessarily what to do. Most people know what to do. It's how to do it. And the biggest issue we have, I think, in modern medicine is taking action or investment today with action for health tomorrow. That's the monumental task that faces the well-being of elderly people. So you have to pay attention to each domain um, if you're engaged in holistic care. Very important are things like psychosocial well-being, our understanding, for example, that people in loving or caring relationships, be they homosexual or otherwise, in fact, have better lives. They have better social and physical well-being. Clearly, the avoidance of substance abuse is important, and I'm not really talking about cigarette smoking or alcohol. I'm more talking about the dirty stuff they put in food and simple sugar. So optimum nutrition is very important, as indeed is exercise. But exercise is applied in a way that sometimes is not acceptable to patients. And I'm not talking about winning Olympic medals. I'm talking about walking. Unfortunately, we have a society a Western society that really may even drive their SUV to the bathroom if they had chance. Now, 
Please do not underestimate sexual health. We know increasingly in recent studies how important good sexual function actually is to longevity, social and physical well-being. In fact, some very impressive studies show reduction in the prevalence or incidence of cancer among those people enjoying extended good sexual experience. And finally, I'd like to really impose upon you with this whole epidemic of sleeplessness and the establishment of the biorhythm of sleep is much more important than modern medicine has realized. We have approximately now 100 million Americans who do not sleep well. Now, I missed something out, and I've been very much involved in the detoxification programs uh, for those individuals involved in massive exposure and toxic pollution following the 9-11 disaster. And we have a detox unit in lower Manhattan where we now have treated approaching 100, uh, excuse me, approaching 1,000 individuals, rescue workers. And what's become apparent in the data that we've collected over the last several years is really the importance of environmental toxicity in the progression and advancement of premature aging and probably really in the area of the promotion of chronic disease. And if you travel now the Pacific Rim, you'll see the emerging consequences of this massive increase in the use of synthetic chemicals. Now, we don't know what a fraction of these synthetic chemicals actually do in biological systems. But we're getting some idea when it go, comes to PCBs, but there is a whole host of nutrient additions or non-nutrient additions to our food chain and toxins that are ubiquitous in our environment that contribute certainly to premature aging. Now, in a simplistic way, I can assure you that a large amount of residual disease in rescue workers exposed to organochemicals is really all about accelerated oxidative stress. Now, people that you're seeing in recuperative centers uh, may benefit from basic supernutrition. And the idea of giving a multivitamin is passe in today's nutraceutical world. We were never presented multivitamins in isolation, and they must be given in combination, but they need to be given with cofactors such as minerals and phytochemicals. So the modern way forward now is to use greens, vegetables, berry powders that contain whole food vitamins and vitamin additions where necessary. 